All right, I'm going to express a, a few opinions here. Uh, we're having trouble starting this bike. We all agree to that. And people are saying, well, get yourself a roller starter. Boy, if you've never worked with a roller starter, first of all, don't say get yourself a roller starter unless you have a lot of experience with roller starters because they are a pain in the butt. They are difficult to use. They're not like you see in the racing movies where everybody sticks one under the rear wheel and jumps up in the air and bounces on the bike and the engine starts and they all roar off. It doesn't work that way. To put a roller starter under a bike, and I did it one time, I borrowed a roller starter from my good buddy Roger. I brought it up here. The first thing I did when I hit the button was zip right out from underneath the bike. It was on the ground, by the way, all the way down. Okay, you can't just put it under the wheel. It will move. So I strapped the roller starter down to the lift, put the bike on it, tried it again. All it did was spin the roller starter, which is like, it's, which is very, very rough, sort of like really, really coarse sandpaper. And all it did was spin the rollers and try to eat two holes into the tire. It's spinning and the tire is sitting there saying, I don't want to go. So then I said, oh, okay, so what I have to do is I have to strap the bike down from up here to the, to the lift to keep the tire on the rollers. So finally, you get the tire down on the rollers. The rollers are strapped to the lift. The bike is strapped to the lift. There's pressure on the rear wheel. You pull in the clutch and you spin up the roller and you let out the clutch and it goes, ah! because you're trying to spin an 850 cc Norton or a 650 Triumph even. Let me tell you, it doesn't go pop, 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 real happily and joyfully. It fights you tooth and nail. So let me tell you, unless you have personally got a lot of experience using roller starters, stop saying use a roller starter, okay? Because they're really, really difficult to use. The second thing is I'm going to opinion, opine, is starter fluid. Literally and truthfully, I sincerely and truthfully be, believe that when I get finished working on a bike, it will run. I don't even try to start a bike until I'm 100% convinced it will run. I've done everything it needs it. It's all perfectly adjusted and it will run. At that point in time, I'll try to start it. Now, if a bike doesn't start after 6, 8, 10, 12 kicks, it doesn't want to run. And it's telling me, I don't want to run. At this point, the best thing to do is to go have a cup of coffee, sit back, relax, smoke them if you got them, do something to get your head straight, uh, come back with a fresh outlook on life and start over. Re clean the carburetor again. Double check the ignition. Double check everything you've worked on. Double check, double check, double check. The bike has to want to run. And if a bike doesn't want to run, starting it with starter fluid doesn't prove anything at all. All you're gonna do is get a quick blast, maybe, and you can say, well, that proves it's carburation. Well, it doesn't really. It really doesn't. There's some reason the bike doesn't wanna run. So when I have a bike that doesn't want to run, I do not force them to run. I don't believe in forcing bikes to run. If you force a bike to run, you may do damage to it. So there may be a reason and you're forcing it to run, you may do damage to that bike. So I never force a bike to run. Now keep in mind, this is a different environment from a pri privately owned motorcycle. If you own your own motorcycle and you drive it yesterday and you go to start it today and it won't, feel free to do anything you want. But first of all, these aren't privately owned motorcycles. I don't own them. Other people do. And I work on them. And the primary objective of working on a client bike is to make it as safe as possible, as reliable as possible, and not do any damage to it. And work with the best parts possible. You're not out here to save money. You don't buy cheap parts because you're trying to save your client money. You buy the best of the best. Get the bike running so that it starts easy, runs easy, shifts smoothly, stops as best as you can with a 65 year old braking system and make them as safe as humanly possible. Because remember, clients, survivors have lawyers. Now, if you're working on your own bike, it doesn't matter if you crash it because you forgot to tighten the axle nut. 
that's on you. You're not going to look for somebody to blame. But with, when you're in a business working on bikes for people, you got to take every consideration. You have to work with only the best and do the best you can and basically do a whole lot of CYA. And if you don't know, don't know what CYA is, it means do your best. Use the best. Make them as reliable and safe as possible and hope for the best. So there's a little frustration boiling to the surface. Yes, I'm a little frustrated with this bike. I'm going to put it aside for a few days and let myself calm down. And I'm going to work on another bike. So there you have it. That's the rant for the day. I don't do this very often, but um, that's the way it is, guys. It's a different environment when you're doing this as a business than when you're doing it on your own personal bike. Big difference. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry if I, if I irritate anybody. It's just the way it is.